Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Sachin again, and today I'll be covering in this uh, tutorial about uh, how to run uh, your couple of applications in a highly available manner um, into a Kubernetes cluster, uh, which means like you, I mean, we will be running a database which is um, highly available and resilient. What I mean by that, um, in case if your uh, database pod in a Kubernetes cluster, um, crashes, uh, your data is not lost. Similarly, we'll be having a backend application, just enabling some of the uh, um, sample or demo uh, endpoints as a REST uh, service. And then we will have an Nginx to basically uh, talk to this backend service. And we will be using, um, uh, we'll be deploying it into Kubernetes cluster. And uh, for that, we will be using Minikube, which uh, basically will provide you a, a uh, Kubernetes environment in your local system. Let's get it started. All right. Uh, okay. So the very first thing, uh, so basically what just now we talked about is what we're going to do is we will run a database, um, which will run as a pod, but it will be like, um, it will be like you know, resilience to your failure, failures of the pod if pod crashes. And once it comes back, because Kubernetes will make sure uh, if if a pod crashes, it'll like restart another one, but your data is not lost. Uh, I'll be running uh, three instances of my backend service, which which uh, which basically connects the database and just some sample endpoints for some basic CRUD operations. Uh, whatever you see in green is basically a Kubernetes service, and whatever you see in yellow is basically the pod. So we will be calling an Nginx service which will, uh, in a round robin fashion, which will redirect the traffic in any of these pods. And these pods will basically make a call to backend service using the service name. And uh, you know, Kubernetes DNS will ensure the service discovery and the request ends up any one of the pods, right? And this pod is connected to database and you get the response back. Once we achieve this, we will basically crash these pods. We'll just um, you know, uh, delete some of the pods and we'll make sure, and we will see, that Kubernetes brings these pods back and your application is um, you know, resilient to any of these crashes. So let's get it started. All right, um, so basically um, this is the directory, which, which this is the my GitHub repository. All the links, whatever we talk in this tutorial, I'm gonna put in the YouTube video description. So please um, uh, don't worry about uh, the commands, they will be there in the description. So um, so this is my repository. You might have already seen my previous videos and you know how to basically run um, all these infra in your local environment, just a matter of seconds, not even minutes. Uh, let's go to util scripts. One of the important scripts is a mini cube sh. Uh, you can actually, the first very first thing you can do is like install um, any uh, virtualization solution um, where your um, VM will run. I'm using Oracle uh, VM virtual box. And um, you also need Minikube. You can Google it, how to install Minikube. But once these two things are ready, it's a matter of like, you know, issuing Minikube commands and um, running your Minikube. So this is the script Minikube. You can actually go, uh, pretty much you can issue this command manually, but I have combined this script and it is available as a matter of run these commands. So just go to any temporary directory. Um, I'm gonna Go to let's say T5. Right, um, T5, just some one of the temporary directory and delete what it's already having. All right, so the one option which I use is the four screen starts, but basically you can just type usage, it will give you what all options are available. So usage will give you the use, usage, what all the other valid options. I'm gonna use force clean start instead of usage. So this option. So basically this is the command you can just copy paste. This executing this script with force clean start option, right? Basically a couple of these commands. So let's quickly see a glance what it does. It just uh, issues the mini cube delete, which anything is already there. It just deletes it because that's what force clean start means. It removes uh, these uh, hidden folders which may maintain some of these states. 
uh, and then it starts i'm using four cpu and eight gb ram um, in case if you want some edits just feel free to issue this command manually but this perfectly works for my uh, demo purpose okay at last we will be um, which i am actually not covered in this uh, diagram but eventually we'll be covering how at final how you can use ingress so actually you can expose this if your system ip is publicly accessible you can actually access all your services in a in uh, your public url so to enable that it just needs these two add-ons needs to be enabled all right so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do here is um just go back infra come to usual scripts and issue this command i think i've already pasted a little cancel and execute so before executing, I just want to show you there is nothing over here. Once I execute, um, mini queue cluster um, will be set up, and we will see uh, a VM is getting created, which is currently power off, and now it is coming into running mode. This usually takes uh, three to four minutes in my system, um, so I'm going to pause my video for some time till it is fully comes comes back, and then we can get it started. 